Let's talk about my favorite database meets spreadsheet tool, and that's called Airtable. And now Airtable is super, super awesome and very powerful. And for a number of reasons that we're gonna go through in this tutorial, I recommend that you use Airtable over something like Google Spreadsheets or even Excel. It is so much more powerful than those other tools ever can be. And that's because this can be so in depth that you can use it for something like a CRM, which is a customer relationship management tool. You can use it for project management. You can use it for personal items like vacation planning. Uh, you can use it for your clients or you can use it for your own business, which is what I'm going to show you as an example in this tutorial. So to get started, you can either enter your email here right away on their homepage or you can click sign up. Like many other tools, when creating your own uh, profile account, you're going to enter your first and last name, email, and uh, password. Now you can enter your own custom email and password, or you can simply sign up using Google, which uh, if you are already using something like a Gmail account, you can sign up with your Gmail information. When you do sign up for your free account, you'll come here to the Airtable homepage, which I love because it's a really easy way to view all the different projects that you're working on all at once. So if you're a first time user, you probably don't have this basis shared with me section, and that's cool. This is actually a project that a client of mine created and shared with me separately. Now next, you'll see an untitled section with a bunch of different templates. Now you don't have to use any of these templates, templates, but if you do, if you are working on something with a client, uh, let's say a client of yours wants to track their own sales. Maybe you work with a sales team and you need to help them track how much money they're, they're selling, how much money's coming in, uh, the different prospects that they're talking to. You can actually just use a pre-built template to help you start. So templates are very, very powerful. And you can see here that they've got a lot of different things already preset that you might wanna know, the account, primary contact. Anyway, all this stuff is here for you if needed, but uh, if you're just custom building your own spreadsheet, which is what we're gonna do together in this tutorial, don't worry about these. Uh, another thing I wanna mention is that you can actually make this homepage a little more customizable to yourself. So if you click on these little gray arrows, you can actually rename your workspace. This could be personal, like if you wanna use Airtable partly for your own personal needs, that could be vacation planning with family, or um, maybe you wanna make a spreadsheet for something like movies you want to watch on the weekend or date night ideas or anniversary gifts whatever it is you can make that your own here and you can also add unlimited workspaces with this free account um, so i'm going to add clients because in this tutorial we're going to track clients together or you could have a workspace for client a you could have a workspace for client B, whatever it is that you need, you can keep your clients and your personal needs separate. For this tutorial, we're gonna go ahead and create a database that tracks clients and how much money they owe you. So to create your own custom database, you're gonna click on this plus sign and we're going to start from scratch. Now, immediately Airtable will have you customize your own database. And the more databases you have, it's really handy to be able to change the colors and even the icons that you search by. The thing I actually really like about this setting is that right off the bat, if you know you are going to share a spreadsheet with a client or a team of people, and you guys already use Slack, which so many clients and companies do nowadays, you can actually sync Airtable with Slack. What this means is if you are already using Slack with a team or with a client and you sync these two, you can alert your clients on a Slack channel anytime you make changes to the database on Airtable. So if you guys are working on a huge project together tracking something, let's just say sales for your client and you input new sales, your client's gonna get that notification on Slack. And it's a great way to keep everybody updated without having to email your client like, hey, I just updated 10 more whatever sales that you made. It's just, it's super simple and it makes Airtable a really powerful tool. So anyway, let's get into the actual database itself. The first thing I like to do in a new database is get everything set up and customized. So I'm going to name this client income tracker. And in our first field, I want to rename this field client name and save. 
Now the different fields that I'm about to create for this tutorial are strategic because I want to show you what it's like to add attachments, to use formulas in Airtable, um, how to indicate how to add tags so that you can very quickly see who's paid you and who's not. These are all powerful elements that you can use for your own projects. But we're gonna keep it pretty simple now. Um, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna add a profile picture. Now we as virtual assistants don't often work face to face with our clients. In fact, I've never met like 99% of mine. So I'm gonna do profile picture because it's always nice to put a face to the name, but the most important reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to show you how to change the field type and how to add attachments. So when you change a field type in every single field or column that you create, you'll very likely want to change the field type. And you'll see we have a lot of different options here, which is pretty cool. For this particular one, I want to do an attachment. Now an attachment allows you to add anything like an image or a PDF or any kind of document that maybe um, somebody else needs to view. You can actually just drag it into your row and it'll just be there for you. It's so great, you don't even need links anymore. You can actually just drag things right into the Airtable itself. All right, so we've got their profile picture. We wanna know what they look like. Let's do another customized field. Let's track how many hours, no, let's track how much you charge per hour. So hourly rate. And again, we're gonna customize the field type. And since we're tracking hourly rate, that is a currency. And when you default to something like a currency, Airtable will automatically help you set it up. So if you don't work in USD, you can add your own currency here. Uh, but I do work in the US, so I'm gonna keep it as USD. Next, I'm gonna add another field and I wanna track how many hours I've worked with this particular client. And you guessed it, we're gonna change the custom field type again, this time to a number. And again, you can change to how many decimal points you wanna actually track. I'm guessing though that you don't necessarily wanna track uh, your hours worked to the nth degree, so we're gonna keep that as is as well. So we've got hourly rate, hours worked. Next, let's include a date. So it's gonna be payment owed. So payment owed can be something powerful. This is actually a date. So once again, we're going to change it. We're going to add date and we'll loop back to that in a little bit. All right, the last field we're gonna add is a tag because I wanna be able to quickly see who's paid us, what payments are still pending and maybe who owes us money. And I wanna be able to see it quickly. Um, so we're gonna see paid, let's just call it paid. Uh, no, let's not call it paid. So we're gonna call this status. And one more time, we're gonna change this to single select item. Now the single select item is the best way for you to add different tags. And we'll show, and I'll show you what that means and how to add them. So there are, I think, three potential options for payment status. That is paid. That is, let's do payment sent. That means you sent a payment and it's pending and that client owes you. And you can change the colors too, which I think is also very powerful. So paid can be in green, meaning green for good, yellow is it's pending, and red means they still owe you. So let's go ahead and save that. All right, so to enter a new field, all you're gonna do is just start typing. So my clients are the Avengers. Don't know if you've heard of those guys. Uh, for some reason, I can't think of any female Avengers right now. Anyway, um, so if you already don't have a picture of your, your client, you'll very likely wanna go onto LinkedIn, LinkedIn and just drag their profile photo onto your desktop. And then from there, we're going to drag the picture from your desktop into the field. All right, well, that's uploading. We're gonna go ahead and put some hourly rates in. So I'm gonna pretend that Thor gets really a highly specialized skill for me. Like maybe I do web management for his own website. So I charge him $60 an hour, which by the way, if you guys haven't checked out my other course about specialty services, I definitely recommend it because I basically talk about how to triple your rates as a virtual assistant. But anyway, for Hawkeye, he gets general services and maybe Iron Man was grandfathered into an old, uh, outdated hourly rate. So for whatever reason, they're all different. Point here is we've got our currency in there. Now I'm going to type how many hours worked. So uh, since I charge my clients monthly, um, Thor, I worked 30 hours this month. 
Hawkeye got 25 and Iron Man was 10. Now payment owed is, oh my gosh, I just realized I forgot the most important thing. We're gonna add a field and we're gonna do invoice total. So the whole reason I wanted to show you this was the formula. Holy moly. So I'm adding an invoice total and I'm going to change the customized type here again to formula. This was literally the whole reason I wanted to show you this and I forgot about it. So formulas are a little different on Airtable than they are on spreadsheets or Excel because you don't have to enter any manual like equal sign equals blah, blah, blah parentheses. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're simply going to click once. I'm gonna move my face. And we're gonna look for hourly rate, highlight. You're gonna hit shift eight, which is the asterisk symbol. That is the universal symbol for multiply. We're gonna multiply your hourly rate by your hours worked and you're gonna hit save. What I wanna do now is just drag that over so it's really clean. Now you can see I worked 60 hours, I worked 30 hours at 60 hours, so um, the invoice for Thor is $1,800. That formula alone makes this a really powerful tool because it's so simple and intuitive. Sorry, I forgot about it. Okay, so for payment owed, now that we know how much our clients owe us, payment owed is really cool because if you double click that's two quick clicks on this field. The calendar will actually pop up. So uh, I'm going to pretend that everyone owes me at the same time. No problem. First of the month. Now status, if you recall, we already indicated that we have paid payment sending and owed. So when you click on uh, this field, so we already know that we've got items that we want to choose from. When you click on the field, an automatic arrow will appear. So click on the arrow to type in any of the tags that you want to use. Um, so let's say Thor's on top of his stuff. He's already paid me. Hawkeye owes me money. And uh, let's say Iron Man payment was just sent. So I'm just tracking who I just sent my invoice to. So this is a very simplified view of what something like Airtable could be. Um, the reason that we add tags like this is because when you have more fields, so theoretically, if you're working on a large project, you could have hundreds, if not thousands of different rows with people, uh, with data. And this filter is a really great option. And I'll show you how it works. So let's say I want to filter out all the people who still owe me money. Like if I, if I have hundreds of different cells and I just want to know who owes me money, what I'm going to do is we're going to click on status because that's what we want to know. That's what we're filtering. Status is owed and it filters out all the other data so that we just see that Hawkeye still owes us money. And if you wanna get rid of that filtered view, you simply click on the X and all your data comes back again. Now filters are cool because you can actually add an infinite number of filters. So if you do have a lot of different, we're talking hundreds of thousands of de uh, details and data, you can keep filtering so that your pipeline get, goes from everything really, really wide and it gets thinner and thinner and thinner until you're just looking at the details that you want to look at. Another cool thing I want to show you is that um, the reason that I like Airtable so much is that this is one of the few things where you can actually look, where you can actually expand a record. And here's where we can see the profile picture, hourly rate, invoice total. Um, we can add any fields we want on this particular view. The, the, the reason that I think it's really cool to actually look at this expanded view is if you're working with a team. Now, if, uh, if you are working with a team on something and they make edits to a field and you want to know what they edited, you can't see their edits in this view. But if you wanted to know if client A made any changes to Thor's field, you would expand it. And then on this side, you see where it says like you edited this record, you would see your client's changes. So if your client uh, changed an hourly rate, it would say client A added, edited this record. So the expanded view is just a nice way to be able to view which teammates or which people on your spreadsheet are working uh, on different fields. Um, and another thing too, if you do wanna share the spreadsheet, all you're gonna do is look for the shared option up at the corner. You're gonna enter their email. And then here you can actually drop down and indicate how much level of power or access they have to the database. And the last thing I wanna show you is if you want to download a spreadsheet, you're gonna look for the three dots in the middle of the screen and go to download CSV. And what that does is it immediately downloads your 
database as um, a Google spreadsheet or Excel. You can actually open it with either one, which is nice. And if you wanna get back to Airtable, click on that little Airtable icon in the corner and that's gonna take you right back to your homepage. Now, if you guys do have any questions or are looking for something a little more in depth, the homepage has links to some really great video tutorials that Airtable has put together themselves. So again, if you're looking for a little more help on maybe some of their templates or something a little more in depth, do check out these tutorials right on the homepage itself. But I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And again, I really encourage you to use this one over something like spreadsheets or Excel because it's so intuitive. It's very easy to use. It's very easy to use, especially if you're working on teams. And it's a really great way to make sure that everybody's on the same page for whatever kind of project you're working on.